Hello. Welcome to the top 10 treasures of the Victoria Art Gallery. I'm John Bennington, and I'm the manager of the gallery, which houses the public art collection for the city of Bath. Although we're closed until Easter 2021, we still want to share some of our artworks with you. And so today, I'm going to be talking about the top 10 treasures that are part of our permanent collection. When the Victoria Art Gallery reopens, you can come and see these pieces for free in our first floor gallery. In the meantime, please subscribe to our channel to see more videos like this one, or follow us on social media. All the links are below. Thank you. The title of this picture is a small harbour scene and it was painted by the Swiss artist Paul Clay uh, in the year 1919, not long after he was demobbed from the German army and he went back to Munich where he'd been living and where he was a member of the, the Blue Rider group of German expressionist artists. So he's, um, anyway, he, is a, he is a very big shot in the art world, but this was uh, quite early in his career. He was not quite 40. Just to explain a little bit about the Blue Rider group, they were fed up, I think, or disenchanted with the, the, the classical tradition of Western art. So they were looking to alternative traditions, um, which included the art of children, the uh, drawings by the insane, um, and uh, art from non-Western non cultures and folk art. Um, so in their view, they were refreshing art. They were taking it back to its sources. So in clay, I think Paul Clay, is, it's all about color. There, there's a lot of um, fun uh, and humor in his work, but there's a serious side as well. The really lovely thing about this picture, I think, is, it, is um, the more you look at it, the more you see in it, because it, it's effectively a dry dock um, uh, with a number of boats um, moored um, that are being repaired and mended. And then there are little figures up on the quay side, one holding a fishing net. And if you look down below um, in the water, there's a little row rowing boat with another uh, fisherman in it. 1919, at Munich was quite, um, it's sort of quite a dangerous place to be because there was a, a kind of, a little mini local revolution. Uh, the communists were trying to seize power and the curfew was imposed. And Clay's dealer was telling him, look, you've done lots of works on paper, you've done lots of drawings and prints um, and watercolors. We want some oil paintings from you. So he buried himself in his studio and started, uh, you know, producing oil paintings. But at the same time, because materials were in, in great shortage, um, he, he recycled older works that he didn't like anymore. So we've done, um, infrared photography on our painting and we find that it incorporates a drawing that he just painted over the top of and he then attached uh, that piece of paper to a board which he salvaged from an old portrait that he didn't like. He cut it up. So it's actually three pictures in one, um, ironically. He then sold the painting to um, a, a, a German Jewish uh, collector called Alfred Meyer and if we wind the clock forward, he, Germany had to play uh, enormous reparations uh, because after the First World War and it crippled their economy uh, and what resulted was that there was huge inflation on, the, uh, on their currency um, and Alfred Meyer had investments, he was a sort of doyen of the art world, he knew all the artists in Munich, he knew all the theatre, uh, the, all the actors, all the musicians and he loved to hold open house for them and welcome them and it was very, very supportive. So he, in the process, he formed this amazing collection, but his investments all went belly up uh, when in, the inflation went mad um, uh, in Germany in the late 20s. So he, had, he then had to sell bits of his collection and he decided that um, he would sell the small harbour scene um, to a friend of his called Charlotte Haber who was married to a very distinguished uh, German scientist called Fritz Haber, who'd won the Nobel Prize. She bought this painting to hang in her young son's bedroom, in his nursery. Um, but because of their, um, um, their Jewish um, background, um, they, uh, their past came back to haunt them 
and um, it became very uncomfortable, just as it did for, for clay, because it wasn't just um, Jews who were um, obliged to, um, you know, to flee or to you know, take refuge somewhere else. It was also artists. Clay was branded as a degenerate artist and his paintings were taken out of museums. Um, and so, so that, uh, that history was mirrored in what happened in the Haber family. They left Germany for Switzerland um, and in 1936, they still felt that they weren't safe um, and they fled to London. They left all their possessions behind uh, except what they could carry um, on the train. And they took our little painting was one of the few possessions that they took with them. So for me, it's, it's a kind of little talisman of, uh, I mean, it's all about journeys. The painting itself, because, it's, because of its subject matter, the boats, you know, these boats are gonna make journeys. But in a way, there are metaphors for, uh, for me at least, they're, they're metaphors for their escape. And the really lovely bit of the story is that Lutz, the little boy for whom the painting was bought, kept the painting his whole life. And then he decided in an act of great generosity that he wanted to leave it to us. But the, uh, Lutz didn't say anything to us till after he died. And we only find out from his widow afterwards um, that we've been left this amazing picture and some money as well. It came with obviously an enormous responsibility because an, an artist of that caliber is, you know, there are uh, library shelves and library shelves and library shelves about his work. And he, a bit like a composer, he, he very nearly became a concert violinist and then renounced that in favor of becoming an artist. But a bit like a composer, he gave each one of his works a unique number. Um, and our painting bears one of these numbers, but um, the family had never actually been able to get it fully authenticated. And we approached the Clay Foundation in Bern in Switzerland and said, look, we've got this picture. Is it the genuine article? Um, because we, we can't just claim it is on our own authority. Uh, and um, they, um, it took us a year to fully satisfy uh, the, uh, the Clay Foundation that we had the work that he had recorded in his notebook in 1919 and given a unique number. Uh, the Clay Foundation had no idea what the picture looked like, but they had religiously documented it in the catalogue of all of Clay's paintings. So it was there without an image. We supplied the image and after 12 months they said, yep, this is a genuine article. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like or add a comment. I look forward to seeing you next time.